consider a discrete function of time, such as the one shown in this figure over here. And uh, this function is uh, x of t. And we are showing over here, for example, if you look at the bottom of the x-axis, at time step 1, it has a value 1. At time step 2, it has a value 3. At time step 3, it has a value 5, and so on. And what I want to do is to decompose it into some smaller functions, such as the one shown over here. So for example, this histogram over here, or this figure over here, is the value of x1. It says that at time step 1, it has the value 1, and it is 0 everywhere else. This bit of it represents x of 2, this represents x of 3, and so on. Uh, let's try and make, it those, like, make this more precise. So I'm going to define a function which I call the selector function and cell, which takes two parameters, t and tau. And define this function as follows. Cell of t of tau is equal to 1 if t equals tau and 0 otherwise. So how can we use cell to decompose x of t? So let's just take an example. Let's say that we take x of t multiplied by a cell of t comma 1. If we take this product, this is going to be given, it is going to be 0 everywhere except when t equals 1. And then it's going to be x of 1. So this is just nothing but x1. And similarly, x of 2 is given by xt cell t2. And more generally, x of k, for any value of k, is going to be given by x of t multiplied by cell of t comma k. Now, uh, this is good enough, but can we simplify cell t k a little bit more? And yes, we can. I'll show you how to do that. But first, I want to digress a little bit and talk a little bit about a different function. So let's consider the function x of t and another function x of t minus a, where a is some integer. And let's say it's some positive integer to be more precise. So uh, for example, let a equals 1. And let's take the function x of t defined like this. So at time step 1, it has a value 1. At time step 2, it has a value 2. And at time step 3, it has a value 1 again. So that is the value, and that's uh, x of t, and on this axis it's t. And we want to look at the function defined by x of t minus 1. What would its graph look like? So let's just draw it and see. So on the x-axis you have t, on the y-axis you have x of t minus 1. And at time step 2, its value is going to be x of 1, because 2 minus 1 is 1, so x of 1 and that's going to be 1. At time step 3 it will have the value of x of 2 which is 2 so it'll be like that and at time step 3 it's going to be at time step 4 it's going to have the value here. So essentially what you're doing is we are shifting it by one time step and in general we're going to shift it by eight time steps. Now what about the value over here? Well we'll just say it's undefined or we'll just set it to 0 and we'll have the convention that if something is undefined, then the value is zero. It's just a convenient thing for us to do. And if you do it this way, then we can see that the effect of uh, taking the subtraction over here, x of t minus a, is to right shift by a. So the subtraction is the right shift operator. Okay, great. So now let me introduce a new function. I'll call that the delta operator. And delta of t is a very simple definition. Delta of t is equal to 1 if t equals 0 and is equal to 0 otherwise. And so if you draw delta, it's nothing like, it's just like this. Over here is t and this is the value delta. And it has the value 1 when t equals 0. And everywhere else it is actually just 0. What would be the value of delta of t minus a? The graph for t minus a would be something like this. We have t on this axis. And for the value a, it has a value 1. And everywhere else, it's 0. 
And so we see right away that the cell function, cell of t comma tau is nothing more than delta of t minus tau. Because what we're doing is we're selecting the tau -th value and we do that by essentially right shifting the zero value over here, the value at time step zero over here, all the way over. And so uh, this allows us to then rewrite this previous equation over here. Uh, what did we put over here? Xt, xk is xt cell tk. So let me write that on earlier. So earlier we had the equation x of t can be reconstituted as the uh, as the summation tau equals zero to infinity x of t cell of t comma tau. So all we're saying is that we can take x of t multiplied by cell t tau and that will bring back x t which is the same as saying that it's, it's, it's summation tau equals zero to infinity x of tau cell t tau because we don't really care about the value of x anywhere except at uh, at the value tau itself so that's why we can substitute this one over here with this one with x of tau and uh, that's still okay now we know from here that cell t tau can be written differently so we can rewrite this as sigma tau equals zero to infinity x tau delta t minus tau and so we're just saying that using our new notation for delta and the understanding of minus tau means right shift that x of t is just rewritten in this way and uh, this gives us a nice way of decomposing xt into it, these, these slices and reassembled using the so delta t even star is a slicing operator and it puts it back over here. Now this particular form of a function is important, it's called the convolution of two functions over here, the convolution of uh, x, t and delta. So the convolution x t and delta t is given by the summation with this additional extra operator tau, which says x tau delta t minus tau. And more generally, the convolution of x t and y t is given by x is represented in this way as x t convolved with y t is given by uh, summation tau equals zero to infinity x tau y t minus tau and for functions x and y which are defined from minus infinity to infinity we can rewrite this as x t convolved y t equals sigma tau equals minus infinity to infinity x tau y t minus tau and this is the definition of a discrete time convolution. To, to understand this a little bit better, let's just write zt equals xt convolved yt. And therefore zt is equal to given is given by sigma tau equals minus infinity to infinity x tau y t minus tau. So what we're saying over here is that for each value of t, we need to go off and so let me just highlight that using this purple color over here. So for each value of t over here, I need to do this infinite summation over all possible values of the helper variable tau. And so if I want to compute z of one, for example, I need to compute the sum of all the values of a tau equals minus tau equals minus infinity to infinity x of tau y of t minus tau right and so uh, this means for each value z z2 we've got to do infinite sum again and so the convolution operation turns out to be expensive it is an expensive operation because we need to do this potentially uh, infinite sum for each value of the, uh, of the output of the convolution. And so much of the work we're going to do from now on in the transform domain is essentially to try to make this somewhat simpler. 
And uh, example 5.4 in the text is going to give you an example of how this is done. I will let you figure it out on your own. But uh, this is really worth paying attention to to tell you why it's expensive to do the convolution operation.